Okay, well, and feel free to bring me down next week, too. <laughs> we'll go on SoundCloud. Yeah. Well, today is December 8th, and that means it's the eighth day of Advent. And Advent is about, like, historically, Advent was the series of events that led up to the return of the light. Okay, Christmas Day, 2,000 years ago, it was winter solstice, the birth of Christ. It is the return of light. Now, for us, it is our personal journey here and now of the events leading up to us bringing light into the world, us bringing more light. Our personal advent is about the choices that we are making during this time. And so this week, we talk about peace and giving the gift of peace. Now, everybody loves the idea of peace, right? We all say, oh, yeah, I would love for there to be world peace. If, if we were to drink a toast right now, half of us would be like, yeah, it's world peace. <laughs> right? But see, I think we're brought up to believe that peace is the result of an action taken out here. Right? So when this goes the way we want it to go, then we can have peace. So if war was to just cease all around the planet, then we could have peace. If conflict were to just cease all around the planet, or in our own family dynamic, or tribe, or circle of friends, right, then we could have peace. So we think peace means we change something out here first, so then we can have peace. But the former, one of the former prime ministers of India, he was actually a member of Gandhi's civil disobedience movement, his name was Nehru, he said, peace is not a relationship of nations. It is a condition of mind brought about by serenity of soul. That is peace, serenity of soul. Peace is not merely the absence of war. It is also a state of mind. Lasting peace can only come to peaceful people. So it's peace within that leads to peace within our lives which leads to peace within our community and into our world. So I visualize peace like we are a fountain. There's a fountain within us, and when we tap into peace, this golden honey light flows from us. And like honey, it's sticky and sweet, and it flows into our life, and it just sticks to everything in our life. And that is how we give the gift of peace. So peace starts within, and what we do is we make the choice to turn within. We feel like a lack of peace in our lives, so we turn within. Okay, that's the first decision we have to make. We turn within and tune into God. We think about these principles that we talk about every single Sunday here at Unity. We think about these principles and then decide, well, maybe for today I'll act on these principles. <laughs> All right, and so I'll see God is everywhere present. God's everything that's ever been, ever yet to be, every bright idea, and within every situation, circumstance, event, and every person. God is everything, God is the all, and that means me, and that means me. So what we're doing is we're deciding, we're making the choice to turn within and do all that, so that we create, we create peace first, we create peace within us, we unlock that little fountain so the honey can flow freely into our life. But because peace is a series of choices on our part, it's considered a practice. So peace is a practice. We are creating peace in our lives. Our peace, our ability to experience peace is wholly determined on our ability to connect with peace within us. We are spiritual beings in a body. We are not waiting for somebody out here to deliver peace to us. We are creating it from within. So why would we want to even practice peace? Why? When we practice peace, it helps us move from victim consciousness into solution mode. Okay, it helps us to do that. We stop focusing on the problems and instead we're focusing on the new things we want to create in our lives. That's one thing it does. Practicing peace allows us to be open and allowing and receptive to our greatest good. Okay, to receive and express all the gifts of the universe. Okay, that's what peace also allows us to do. Peace sets us up to be agents for change. Okay, to be forces for good. Because we're not 
focusing on the problem so we can see something that other people may not see when they're focused on the problem. So peace turns us into change agents, forces for good, and it helps us carry as much light as possible right here and now while we're using these bodies for this wonderful experience on this planet right now. So practicing peace is, is a practice, and it has two components to it. The first part of practicing peace, because, see, we want to practice peace because we, we can look around and we can see where there's a lack of peace somewhere. Okay, the lack of peace, it, it may be in our own lives, or it may be in our community, it may be in our country, our world, but somewhere we're noticing there is a lack of peace. Now, it is a practice because it is a challenge for us. The challenge is that if we want to create peace within us, we have to give up the thing keeping us from having peace. We have to give it up. And it's not the situation, like we might think it's a particular situation causing us to lack peace in our lives. The thing that we have to give up is our idea that that situation can take our peace away from us. And that's a hard thing to do. <laughs> we have to give up blaming. We have to give up blaming something for our lack of peace. Now, I know you've heard the serenity prayer, and I'm just going to read a brief part of it. God, give me the grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Okay, so serenity of soul, right? Serenity of soul, that is peace. That is when we attain the peace within. We have peace, we have serenity of soul. So the first practice in the practice of peace, the first step, is acceptance. Accepting. Accepting everything that's going on right here and now. We're all old enough, we're grown up enough to know that we cannot control most everything in our environment. There are some things we can. But other people, yeah, right? We can control other people. But we know that we can control how we respond to things. So we, when we are learning to practice peace, this is important to think about, being able to accept what's happening here and now, because when we can't accept, we're blaming, and that means something out there will always be controlling us. So we learn to center in peace so that we are controlling our response. Nothing out here can ruffle us. So we accept the package of our life, our life, our relationships, our physical body. We accept where we are right here and now. This is actually the very simple part of this practice. All we're doing is acknowledging, we're just acknowledging, this is how things are right here. This is how, this is where I am right now. Accepting the package of our life Acknowledging what is going on right now, it's not about tolerating bad behavior. It is not about accepting being in a dangerous circumstance or a bad situation. It's not about saying, okay, well, I'll accept the fact that I'm sick, but I guess then I just have to always be sick if I'm going to accept it, so I can't do anything about it. Oh, I'm financially strapped, so I guess I'll just always have to just accept I'll always be financially strapped or, or lonely or not living my purpose or feeling lost in this world. I have to just accept how that is. Okay, that's not acceptance. That is victimization. Okay, so acceptance. All acceptance is is acknowledging this is how things are right now. This is where I am right now. So we know where to start. We get a starting point. We always want to have our starting point. If you were going to plan a trip to Italy, you would plan getting to Italy from here. Like you would go online and book a ticket from somewhere, an airline here, that you could drive to. I would choose Ontario because I don't like going to LA, but we'd probably end up going to LA if we're going to Italy, right? You wouldn't go online and look at airfare flights from France to Italy because they're so much cheaper. <laughs> and book that flight. We start where we are right here and right now. That's why it's so important for us to acknowledge this is what's happening right here and now. This is where I am. That way we can get a clear starting point. 
And then we can, we understand, do we have to learn to accept a thing that cannot be changed? And so what do we do in that situation? If it's something happening that can't be changed, where do I need to go? Right? Or if it's something that can be changed, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? Now, this is the part where acceptance gets hard. Okay, acknowledging is the easy part. This part is harder because now we have to take responsibility. Okay, if we know where we are right now, what's going on right now, then we learn what it is we have to do next. And any of us who have ever been in a difficult situation, in a situation that was not bringing us peace, and we decided we wanted peace in our life, we know that the next thing that we have to do will probably be a hard thing. Anybody who's ever had to go through a divorce had to first accept that the marriage wasn't working or that maybe their partner decided, you know, kind of, they decided the marriage wasn't working and it took them by surprise, right? But they had to accept it. Somebody may have a health issue and they had to accept that it was now time for a radical change in their diet or their lifestyle. Somebody may have decided they were working for a company that was out of integrity and so that meant they were out of integrity, what they had to do, and they couldn't live with that, even though it had good money and maybe great benefits. So they made the choice that they had to leave. So anybody, and I know all of you have had to face at some point, you've had to make a difficult decision and make a hard choice. And to do that, I know you first accepted what was going on, because we have to, to know where to start, to know that next thing to do. So we accept a situation, we make the choice to move on just by asking or just by stating, yeah, this is where I am right now. This is what's going on. If I want to have peace, this is what I have to do. This is the next thing I have to do. So acceptance will actually lead us into a this is what I have to do now moment. Because we have to do something different. The situation, maybe we can change it. The situation, maybe we can't. But either way, we're the one that will be doing something different. So the next practice, so the next step in this, so first we're accepting, then we forgive. Forgiveness is the next part of practicing peace. We cannot practice forgiveness without first accepting the package of our life, our physical body, our relationships. We can't, we can't get into forgiveness unless we can accept things. Now, we only need to forgive if we're blaming something outside of us for our unhappiness. We only need to forgive, right, if, if there's something out there that is still controlling our happiness factor, still keeping us from feeling peace. So, we say, okay, this is where I am, this is what's going on. We might have to go a little farther with that, okay, to forgive. This is what has happened to me. This is the terrible thing that happened to me. This is a thing that I wish I could go back in time and change and I can't. This is a thing I did that I wish I never did. We may need to acknowledge that. There's only ever a need to forgive when we're blaming something out here for our suffering. We're only blaming when we are in resistance. Acceptance frees us. Acceptance gives us freedom. Because all we have to do is acknowledge it, and then we are tuning in. And we have something within us guiding us. There's that within that knows what to do, how to do it. It will compel us to act on what it knows. It will comfort us. It will guide us forward. Eric Butterworth, he said, things may happen around you and things may happen to you, but the only thing that matters is what happens in you, what happens within you. Forgiveness is not about this thing that happened. It's not about that. That's already a done deal. It's happened. There's no changing it. There's no getting on our time machine and going back and, and fixing it. It's forgiveness is all about the here and now. Forgiveness is about our deciding to respond to the situation so it cannot control us anymore. And we have to tune in to do that. We tune in to the God within, to our inner being, decide you no longer control me. See, as long as we're blaming it, we give it all our power. So to forgive, 
To forgive is to refuse to give that situation any power over us anymore. And then what happens, because to forgive, we have to accept what's going on, and then we're releasing that, we're, we're refusing to let it have power over us, well, that means we've had to have tuned within to be able to do that. We've tuned into our inner being, to the indwelling spirit. We've tuned into God. Okay, we've tuned into all that, which means we're stepping into our Christ consciousness. We're surrendering to our divine nature. We are in the perfect place where we can remember well, God is all there is. God's all that all things that have ever been, everything yet to be, every brilliant idea, every piece of divine direction that guides me forward into the next brightest version of myself. It is the thing that clears all the obstacles. It is bigger than anything I feel is in my way. God is bigger than anything in its way. Love is bigger than anything in its way. We get all of that just by going here, just by doing that. We all want to be a force for good. We all want to be that, that light in our own life and a light for others. And to do that, we just have to step into our Christ consciousness. To do that, to be the activity of God in this world, to carry as much light as possible, to do that, we just have to practice peace. We don't have to change anything out here we just accept and surrender, and we tune in, and we have the inner peace. We tune in, and we get that peace. We accept. We know this is how it is. This is where I am, so now I know where to start because I'm going to have to do something different now. We move into forgiveness, surrendering to the divine, our divine nature. Our mental tape turns into, I'll stop focusing on what hurt me. I'll stop wishing for time travel. I'll stop planning my revenge. I'm going to focus instead on being the light. I will stop blaming and stop giving that thing power. I will be the light of God in this world. I am a light. I am a light in this world, in this world. That's what makes us a force for good. That's what fills us with light, and that is what makes us receptive to our greatest good. This is what makes us a center for peace. This is what turns on the fountain, releases the golden light of sticky honey, made this peace that sticks all over us, and flows out into our life, flows out into our world. Now the effect, the beautiful, wonderf wonderful effect of this now, and we don't have to do anything to get this next thing except be a center for peace, is that now love is expanding through us, for us, as us. And I'm talking big love. I'm not talking, I love that color on you, and I love lasagna. <laughs> okay, I'm not talking little love. I'm talking love, a cosmic force whose sweep is irresistible. I'm talking love, the urge of pure source to continually expand itself through all of its creations. Source wants to expand through you. That is the divine urge, to expand through you, for you, as you. That's all it wants, is to continue expanding through you, because then it, there's more experiences for that, the light has more experiences. Source has more experiences. There are more opportunities for the activity of God in this world when we let that flow through us, for us, as us. It allows for our greatest good to be experienced. It allows us to keep creating more good for us, but it's coming through us, as us. And this is all no matter what is going on in our lives. This is all no matter the drama. This is all no matter the conflict, the war. All the things that other people think all need to be shut down first before we can experience peace. As soon as we become a center for peace, we are bringing in more of the activity of God. We're bringing more of that golden honey to stick everywhere. Okay, so we're allowing our greatest good. Now, the season is about giving these gifts. And we want to give the gift of peace so we do this because we cannot give a gift we don't have. So we practice this, and then, of course, we know it's not all that hard to give this gift. It's not hard to give it once we have it, once we're embodying it. Because it is flowing out in that sticky golden light and sticking to everything within our path. Okay, it's doing that. So this gift of peace, we can pass it on. We pass it on easily. When we are carrying the light, when we are a force for good, 
because we're embodying our Christ essence, we're embodying our divine nature, we are radiating peace. We're radiating it. In the book of John 14, Christ said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, so let not your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Christ was able to share all these gifts. He shared many gifts because he was embodying the Christ consciousness. Right? He called it Father. He said, the Father within did everything. He gave all credit for every miracle he performed, all credit for every teaching to the Father within. And that's available for us too because we are an emanation of spirit. We're an emanation of source just like Christ was. He was the great example. The great example. Not the exception. He was the example. He knew so strongly in his heart that everybody should be able to do this and more. That when his disciples were like, I don't know what to do. He's like, you know what to do. You should be doing this. He would say that to them. You do this. That's how much he knew. So he was embodying the Christ consciousness. When we're embodying the Christ consciousness, we're peaceful in our thoughts and our words and our actions. No matter what's going on out here. No matter. It's okay. If it's stressful, if it's frustrating, if there's a delay, if there's overwhelm, if we're Christmas shopping, we can tune in to the peace within. We tune into that peace within. We want to remember the divine is in all the details. Right? It's everywhere. The divine is everywhere. We can call it forth no matter where we are. No matter where we are. Now, I discovered as a mom, when I first became a mother, how easy it is for us to influence others with our feelings. Okay? I discovered right off the bat when my firstborn you know, came into this world that if I was anxious, he got anxious. Animals are the same way, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I learned right away, like, I do not want an anxious baby. So I would tune in, and I would create the feeling of peace within myself first. I would call forth the peace first. And then that came in very handy because over the years, my kids, like Adam, my oldest, he actually was jumping over these pews one day, and he fell and got a huge lump on his head. I had to take him to urgent care. My daughter once fell and got a lump on the back of her head, and she got a tiny piece of gravel stuck in her eye one time from playing basketball. And... And, and he cut his leg up the front. We had to get stitches, right? Every time any of these things happened, they were afraid. They were afraid, especially when I said, okay, we got to go to the urgent care. They became afraid. And so what I would do is I would tune in. I would, I'm would, conscious, and you can do this really fast as you get used to doing it. I tuned in. I created peace within myself first. And then I looked at my kids. I looked them right in the eye, and I said, do I look worried? Okay, do I look worried? And my children would like, right there in front of me, just like, <sighs> okay. I said, you know, it's probably not going to be fun, and you're not going to like going there, but you're okay. You are okay. And in a few hours, we're going to be eating ice cream or popcorn or something. <laughs> okay? So we just tune in. We tune in. We can tune in to God at any time because God is everywhere present. God is all things ever been and ever will be. Every brilliant idea, every person, situation, circumstance, event. God is everything. That means me. That means you. God is within us. God is within us. The peace is already there. Right there. It's just that little tiny door waiting to be opened. Huge flood, golden sticky light going everywhere. It is right there. Right there waiting for us. In the book of Romans, uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, said something so sweet about peace. He said, let us strive after peace, because now we know peace is a practice. We've got to work for it. Strive after peace and help one another. Help one another. What I think is so great about being part of a community is we're not all going to be peaceful and centered at the same time. There are going to be days when we're the crazy wild card, and yet there are friends we can turn to who have the peace within them. They've tapped in. They can look us in the eye and say, do I look worried? Okay, our friends can do that for us. We can do that for our friends, for our loved ones. Do I look worried? Paul went on to say, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds 
in Christ Jesus. So the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. This is when we make the choice. We tune in. We remember what God is, all things, everything, everywhere. We remember that. We remember we are an emanation of that. We tune into the peace. The reason it surpasses all understanding is because when we're in that space and there's all this chaos around us and somebody else says, I don't understand how you can be so relaxed through this right now. I don't understand how you can be so peaceful right now. Why aren't you worried? Why aren't you freaking out like the rest of us, right? Okay, I know I've, I've witnessed that in somebody else. They're all peaceful. And I'm like, because I can't understand it if I'm not centered. I can't understand. How are you so calm? That's why the peace of God surpasses all understanding. We, can, we can't really understand it till we go there. Till we go there. It will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus is when we've tuned in, we're embodying our Christ light, our divine nature, love with a capital L, big, big, huge love. We're embodying all that. And now our mind is safe from the drama out here because we're not focusing on the problem. We're here, we become solution oriented. We just see that God can express through all situations. Our heart is guarded because somebody else cannot instill fear into us. When we are centered in peace, we are centered in peace. So peace is a gift we can bring into this world. All we have to do is remember that God is all things, and that means me, that means you, that means the problem, that means the situation, every event, every brilliant idea that you'll get, right? every piece of direction, right? every intuition, every way that you move forward, it's all there, available. We accept the package of our life. This is what's going on, this is where I am, so this is what I, where I start, and I'll figure out what I have to do. It will come to me. I will be guided. I will be guided. With that acceptance now, we can also forgive. So we can stop blaming what's going on out here. Instead, we surrender to our divine nature. The effect of acceptance and forgiveness is big love, big, huge cosmic love, whose sweep is a force that's irresistible. And we are allowing now, because this big love is the effect in our life, we are allowing, with no problem, our greatest good, our greatest good is now available to us. No matter what's going on, the good comes through. No matter what's going on, when we are here, the good comes through. We become that center of peace, and that's the gift we can give. Just sharing that golden, sticky beauty, right? it just naturally. We don't have to try hard at all. We don't have to try, except remembering to ask ourselves to tune in here and make that decision. We make that choice, and then everything comes up through us, for us, as us. Every single time we embody our divine gifts, and we share our divine gifts, we are adding more light into this world. We are adding more light. And that is how we create heaven on earth. So until next time, remember, you are the activity of spirit in a body. You are the heart and the hands of spirit in this world. You are a soul designed to do all of this stuff. Your soul designed for growth and goodness. In everything you do, you are blessed. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much.